At his very inception, Sonic had few tools to get by with, run and jump. Taking one of these out of the equation would surely make things difficult. As the series progressed though, so did Sonic, and by the time the series reached Sonic Adventure 2, Sonic had acquired many tools to use at his disposal. This begs the question, how many jumps does it take to beat Sonic Adventure 2 battle? Cityscape is pretty simple as it's the first stage in the game. You can handle most of Sonic's obstacles by just navigating around them. That is, until the section after Sonic runs down the skyscraper. Here lies our first major obstacle to this challenge. There is a massive pit that we cannot get through without jumping no matter how hard we tried. However, if we use what's called hover frames here, we can do a technique called a spin dash hover to make it to this top ledge, then do another spin dash to the spring at the end of the pit, and the rest of City Escape was a breeze. Exiting City Escape with a jump count of zero. Unfortunately, right away we get hit hard out of the first stage. There is no possible way without upgrades to attack Bigfoot without jumping, so we have to take four jumps right away for each hit, with the current jump count being four. And now, it's time for the Fightin' Freak Knuckles. Knuckles in this challenge will be fairly simple due to Knuckles' wide variety of utility. Since this is a no jumping run, Knuckles is still allowed his signature glide. Knuckles is also allowed to use his attacks like triple punch and spiral uppercut, which helps to allow Knuckles to get off the ground to glide and therefore to climb. While not being able to jump locks out certain pieces, these abilities allow us to reroll pieces until we are able to collect them. Wild Canyon in particular isn't too difficult, as there is the wind tunnel which allows us to get to a lot of places we normally wouldn't be able to access. Some pieces are still unable to be collected without a jump, so it's just a matter of rerolling pieces enough times so that we can successfully complete the stage. Leaving the current jump count at 4. <sighs> and now we have Tails. Tails' first level isn't too bad if looked out in isolation, however the mech stages will be the real difficulty in this challenge. Mech stages focus on run and gun gameplay as well as some minimal platforming. However, what platforming there is makes the jump count rise slowly but surely. We were able to find quite a few spots where we were able to avoid taking an extra jump by damage boosting like this spot right here with the canister, or on this elevator. It might be possible if you get the right bounce. <gasps> Wait, we just did it! Let's go! I don't I don't even know how that worked, but it did. This spot in particular was a big headache as the robots were unable to hit us and get us over the slip. Here where the jumps use in prison lane, and our current jump count now lands at 11. Moving on to the next two Sonic stages, we had to get creative to avoid extra jumps. Normally, you would have to jump across this gap, and then jump on and off the pulley, amounting in three extra jumps. However, if we use this mock bounce, and hit it perfectly, we are able to clear this section and collect the light dash in zero jumps. Pulleys will be our enemy in this challenge, since they force us to jump to progress. Here, I found myself at a major obstacle. We would either have to grab the pulleys, or jump to use a mock bounce to progress. Afterwards though, I found this mock bounce. When using this one, to get to another mock bounce, we can barely make it and complete the section in no jumps at all. I was able to skip an extra jump here by spin dashing into the enemy and continuing a homing attack chain to get across the gap without an extra jump. And with that out of the way, we completed Metal Harbor in no jumps, with the current jump count still being 11. Since I went back after the challenge, the footage on screen will be slightly off, but I left it in if you were curious to see what our original run had in terms of jumps. I'll be updating the correct count at the end of each stage. Shadow 1 was easy enough, as we were able to just attack on the ground, but Green Forest would present some issues. Since attacks are allowed in this challenge, we pick up the Ancient Light here, as it will almost certainly be useful later. We hit the first hurdle here, assuming I would need to jump into the spring presented a problem. Oh god. Oh wait, hold on, we can just go down here. Hi. 
Alternate routes, big pog. After this, we tried to go up the tree as normally intended, but getting up on these springs did not seem possible without jumping, no matter what we tried. There was a solution to this problem, but it would be very, very difficult. If you've seen a Sonic Adventure 2 speedrun before, you may have seen this trick in Green Forest called Wall Run. This trick is already difficult, but not allowing Sonic to jump onto the loop makes it even worse. Let's go? Maybe? No, this doesn't work, does it? Maybe? Let's go! We did it! Zero fucking jumps, baby. <laughs> Let's go! Weg is so sick. After the cool strats we were able to come up with, we emerged from Green Forest unscathed, leaving our current jump count at 11. Pumpkin Hill's rockets and general open atmosphere made for a quick finish and we were able to complete this stage on the first attempt with no jumps. Coming into Mission Street, I thought we had to take a jump here right at the start, but I later realized after the run that there was a solution. If we reset after collecting the upgrade, we can hover off of this platform and make the wait cycle without jumping. These pulleys and wait cycles though, force us to jump twice here without any possible way to get around them, so in total we take three jumps here. Dang it. Wait, unless? Gaming? <laughs> Wait, I didn't need to jump there, that doesn't count. <laughs> was so sick wait a minute wait a minute M, you just gave that was the greatest idea ever <gasps> good shit M. that was hype after this we started planning to get through the rest of this section and realized we could avoid any jump we would need to make here we did this by waiting until the lowest point of the closest cycle riding this up and then hovering to the next one we couldn't find a way to get through this next section without jumping, so we just did one to skip any other potential issues, finishing Mission Street with a jump count of 15. Aquatic Mine was just a matter of us re-rolling pieces that we couldn't collect, and then using a cool mechanic that we haven't used before to collect a piece we otherwise wouldn't be able to collect in this challenge. Hidden Base. The bane of my existence, from speedruns to challenge runs, this stage always remains difficult. This stage has a large amount of jumps, mostly due to the heavy platforming nature of the stage, to slowly climb to the end. Pulleys being the mortal enemy of this challenge has a large presence here in Hidden Base. Each pulley we are unable to skip contributes to at least one and maybe even two jumps each. At the start, we were able to damage boost up to skip one jump by floating over to the next platform. Next, we started to route every possible way to progress, and which of them would be the least amount of jumps. The route we settled on ended up taking a somewhat normal route and then floating down to this pulley, which gives a ton of height when we jump off. The biggest finds in this stage were the areas where we were able to jump from a pulley to a location that would normally require many more jumps to progress. Oh, that's a good question, Spallmar. Probably yes. Let's go! Dude, small Mar so fucking smart. Dealing with the maze section was interesting, as there was quite a few routes to check out, but we found jumping on top of these doors was the way with the least amount of jumps, as we could destroy the one in front of us and progress without an extra jump. There were just parts of the stage where there was no possible way to avoid jumps, so we just tried to take out as many as possible where we could. Attempting every possible path, we found the optimal routes and finally reached the end of the stage. This leaves us with the current jump count of 46. After the battle that was Hidden Base, we had Pyramid Cave on the menu. There were a few areas I was worried about mainly, the key you need to open for the second door, and some of the earlier sections before we get the bounce upgrade. Fortunately, after some searching around, we were able to find methods to get past the beginning and got the bounce upgrade. After this, we needed to do some weird platforming, but everything was more than possible to pull off without jumps. 
There is a door skip for the second key area, but the way it's done in the speedrun is with a jump, so we search for a way to get the key up these stairs without jumping. Oh! There you go! That's it, chat. After learning about this precise door skip, we moved on and the rest of the stage was done with navigating loops and corridors. Meaning we completed Pyramid Cave with zero jumps. Similar to most other knuckle stages, Death Chamber was possible but some pieces were locked out of us getting them. After some re-rolling, we were able to progress. On Egg Golem, we were able to use a beginner speedrunning strat here to mock bounce to the top of the boss's head and complete it without a single jump, leaving us with the current jump count still at 46 since hidden base. Eternal Engine is a stage full of big gaps and pulleys similar to Hidden Base. This stage was looking like we were going to run into a big issue again and rack up the jump counter even more than we already had. But there was something we could do here that we could not do in Hidden Base. We can skip the entirety of the stage due to a speedrunning trick named Bofa. What's Bofa you may ask? Bofa D's? Boxes. Bofa is a skip that uses the collision of these boxes to push tails out of bounds, and with this method we're able to go all the way to the end of the stage, only adding one jump from here. In total, we ended up adding four jumps here as we needed to navigate these pulleys and then jump a single time to get the skip, leaving us with a jump count of 50. Because of Meteor Herd's verticality, I was worried we would have to jump to complete this stage. Being so close to completing every knuckle stage without a single jump, it would be amazing, and thanks to the numerous springs in the stage, we were actually able to do it. No jumps at all for the knuckle stages. We were able to just hit Rouge on the ground for this fight, and even though it took a while, we completed the boss. Alright, we're in the final stretch, two more levels and two more bosses to go. Crazy Gadget was one of the run's biggest challenges left, and it would be difficult to route out the minimum jumps. So here was something I was thinking about, is if I can hit this guy and then move forward maybe? Oh! Was there a shield in that box? Okay, that was sick. <laughs> Originally, we used a super bounce to proceed through this area like we do in the speedrun to avoid the pulleys, but Tenzit in my Discord found a way to avoid this jump, removing one more jump from the equation. We tried to route out the normal path, but this glass was impossible to break from what we know without jumping here, and even if we could have found a way, we might have needed to jump later on as well, so we just gave up on this. We decided to go back and do Crazy Gadget Skip Skip with the Box Hover method. Crazy Gadget Skip Skip, or CGSS, works by weaving Sonic through a gap in kill planes, and then navigating to the end of the stage. The normal method of CGSS involves a spin dash jump, so that was a no-go for this challenge. We were able to use this ledge to find our way onto the box with some odd collision, and then we hit the skip to complete Crazy Gadget in no jumps. Although a bit awkward, we were able to complete Eggman 2 while staying completely grounded, so now we were onto the last stage of Hero Story. Final Rush. Navigating through the beginning of the stage with some careful platforming was tough, as the stage intends you to trick off of these rails. However, with some routing and adjustments to normal playstyle here, we were able to progress to the point where we would normally do Final Rush Skip. Final Rush Skip is done by using skewed gravity to have Sonic travel farther out than intended to go around a kill plane and then turn around. With the correct timing, you can reach the end of the stage easily. People will usually jump off of the rail here to perform the skip, but if we rail switch, we can finish the stage just fine, completing all of Sonic stages with no jumps. The final boss of the run, Shadow 2, becomes a lot more difficult without jumping. These falling platforms made it a lot more precise than I would have imagined this boss to be, but after quite a few attempts, we were able to take Shadow down by repeatedly spin dashing through him when he tried to attack us. Here's the total of every single jump used in Hero Story. That was a little tough! 
As you have almost definitely noticed, I only did Hero Story in this video. I intended to do more, but it ended up being a lot more than I expected to route all of this out. If you enjoyed the video, let me know. If there's enough support, I'll definitely finish the rest of this challenge for Dark Story and Last Story. Thanks for watching, and I hope you have a great rest of your day.